you're talking about chapter four, uh, and the, this is the first chapter that really starts the lean leadership development model that Gary and Canvas and I created, and it starts with self-development. Well, every company has values, whether they're explicitly stated or not. For decades, Toyota did not explicitly state the values when you joined the company, and for a long time it was predominantly a Japanese company. You learn the values through stories, through hearing about the founders, through hearing about Kichiro Toyota and Sakichi Toyota, and some of the great leaders that had uh, began the traditions that are today known as the Toyota way. Fujio Cho, after spending about 10 years in America uh, running the Toyota Georgetown, Kentucky plant, came to the conclusion that for internationalization, Toyota needed to make the values explicit, and he developed the Toyota Way 2001 uh, model. There's a booklet, and there's a course that all managers and executives have to go through at Toyota called the Toyota Way 2001. And what he wanted to do was to really capture that oral tradition, the stories, the uh, habits, and the way that they wanted leaders to behave to be a Toyota leader into this uh, house. And the two pillars are continuous improvement and respect for people. And then at the core are uh, the foundation of five uh, values. We put the foundational values at the center of the model, the true north values. And what we then said is that the starting point for every leader in Toyota is to commit to self-development. I'm not sure where it came from exactly, but part of this long, almost century long tradition within Toyota, starting from the self-made man of Sakichi Toyota, uh, or a carpenter son who ended up inventing an automatic loom and creating a, a global company. Uh, the emphasis was always on you make yourself. Uh, you can get support, you can get coaching, you can get advice, you can have leaders who help inspire and motivate you, we can structure activities, we can structure an environment that supports self-learning. We really have to select people from the beginning who are interested in learning, interested in improving themselves. And Gary Convis is one example of that. Specifically, the True North values uh, start with accepting a challenge with a positive spirit to uh, creatively try to reach the challenge, even though you don't know how. So you have to be able to accept, number one, I don't know how I'm going to get there. Number two, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, and number three, I'm going to use Kaizen. I'm going to systematically use trial and error to learn my way toward that challenge. Uh, you also, there's also a very fundamental uh, value placed on seeing the actual situation. So this idea of trying things, of having a direction, but then trying things and testing and experimenting is very fundamental. And you do that at the Gemba. You do that by actually going and seeing, actually testing, actually talking to customers, watching them using your product. So Toyota talks a lot about developing individuals when they talk about teamwork. And then finally, respect means that people are team members, their associates are team members, and that's very serious in Toyota. It means that you don't simply get kicked off the team because you have a bad day or because the company has a bad day. And the Toyota managers are really trying to teach a scientific way of thinking. This is something embedded in the culture, perhaps it's because they had a scientist entrepreneur as a founder who was inventing things. Uh, but in any case, it's very clear that the core of the Toyota production system is the scientific method. There are tools then, then that we've seen from Toyota, and uh, I think one of the uh, uh, reasons why 
these tools have become popular is because Toyota has been successful. There have been books written about lean management. There have been success stories. And there's a tendency to want to benchmark and be like those who are successful, a general tendency, a general human tendency. So one of the things that a successful company does is they use these one-page reports. And they put a ton of information on a single piece of paper, and it was originally A3 size. Sometimes it's A4 size. So if we have an A, if Toyota has an A3 report and that leads to success, if we have an A3 report, that will lead to success. And we've learned a little bit about A3 that it's actually a method to develop leaders. What you learn is that the thinking and behavior patterns that are being taught are really in the mind of the seasoned coach, in the mind of the mentor, not in the A3 tool. The A3 is simply a format on a piece of paper. What the A3 tool can do is it can help the mentor to understand the thinking of the person and force them to crystallize their thoughts and write down a short summary of their thoughts. But those thoughts develop over time. So they call it an A3 story because the story is unfolding. It has a beginning, middle, and end. And the report simply is capturing at any point in time a snapshot of that unfolding story. Now, an A3 gets used in other organizations without the underlying thinking process of the mentor, without the mentor who's, who's transferring that understanding of how to define the problem, how to set the challenge, what is the ideal state, what is the gap you're trying to shrink, what are you going to try to test your ideas, how are you going to know if you're successful or, fa or a failure. They're teaching a pattern, a way of thinking, a process of improvement, but if a men if you don't have a mentor doing that, and you simply have somebody that says, fill out this report, I'm going to check the report, they look at it, have a few questions, you answer them, and then they say, good job, uh, maybe you can make the graphics a little more colorful. The uh, A3 will fail as a tool. It will fail to develop leadership. So the question is, how can we make this process that's represented by this diagram habitual and institutionalized. And this process is working toward a challenge. Again, that's the first uh, foundational value of the Toyota way. And doing it systematically through the Kaizen process and pursuing it by breaking it down to successive concrete target conditions. So we have a vision and the vision is way out there. Then we turn that into a one to three year challenge. Then we're going to set successive short term target conditions. I want the process to look like this in order to get this result. And then we're going to iterate. We're going to try things until we reach the target condition. Then we'll set the next one and the next one and the next one. And over time, we'll meet the challenge. So if I'm given a challenge in, in uh, the book we talk about a challenge Gary Condis was given to uh, achieve a 60% reduction in North American total warranty cost for all vehicles in North America that are on the road that are being brought in for repair, 60%. That seems like an overwhelming challenge. But Gary was given six years. So he immediately broke it down and said, well, 60% sounds bad, but 10% a year is not so bad. And a little less than 2% a month is even better. And a fraction of a percent a week is even more realistic. So he immediately thought about this problem in terms of the method for problem solving that he had been learning for decades. And he pulled together a team of seasoned people, executives from each part of Toyota, who had been developed to be lean leaders, to think the same way. And then they started bringing on more junior people who they were coaching. And they uh, tried many things. If you ask 
what and they did achieve the goal of 10 percent a year but how they did it was through uh, thousands of small changes small improvements and some of them made a big difference some of them made very little difference but they learned and they learned and they learned and they reached that challenge leaders don't become good coaches of improvement simply by telling them that they need to be a good coach or simply by showing them what a Toyota leader looks like or bringing them to a Toyota plant or seeing the pros in action. The leaders have to learn. And the, the improvement kata and coaching kata are designed to be used with a coach and they provide a structured routine. And it starts with the direction. You might have learned about defining the problem and what Mike is emphasizing is you have to really understand the direction and the direction has to be in the form of a challenge, something that's a stretch. And there has to be a reason for it. You have to understand why. When you understand where you're going, then you have to understand where you're starting from. Uh, just like any journey, it's great on a map to know where you want to get to when you get to Germany and this, you want to get to a small village, but it doesn't help if you don't know where you are. So you have to know where you are, and that means grasping the current condition. And you'll hear that a lot in Toyota, um, trying to understand the current conditions. And understanding the current condition means that I want to know the facts. Uh, it's not enough just to look at statistics, which give you a summary or a big picture view uh, or an indicator, you have to go and see yourself, go to the Gemba and see and understand the real facts of the situation. So now you're grounded, now you know where you are, you have a direction, but the direction is way out there, and you want to know where do I make my first left or right turn. And the map isn't that detailed, it doesn't tell you that, because this is uncharted territory. So you're going to have to kind of feel your way along. And the way you do that is by establishing your first target condition. Uh, I want to get a uh, half mile. I want to get a mile. And the more experienced you are, the longer that uh, first step can be. So it could be a three-month target condition if you're very experienced. But if you're not very experienced, it's usually better to fail fast and often which means set a one a two week is usually recommendation a two week target condition where do i where do i expect to be in two weeks and i'm going to commit to that and then i'm going to identify the obstacles between me and that two week target condition and it's a target condition so it could be an outcome like a reduction in quality defects but it's better if it's a pattern uh, we want people to very easily be able to pick the right part and not pick the wrong part. And what is the target condition? How can you define it in a way that I can come and see and, and observe and tell whether you have, yes, achieved it or no, not achieved it? And then the way I'm going to move to that target condition is not going to necessarily be with one brilliant idea that has to be right, but rather with experiments with plan, do, check, act. So I'm gonna try things and test to see if I get closer to the target condition. If I only have two weeks, those experiments better be real simple and fast. If I have to order a piece of equipment that's gonna take two months to get here and a month to install, by then there's uh, over a dozen target conditions that I could have worked to try to achieve. So by definition, I'm going to rule out big changes that uh, are going to require a lot of time. I'm going to start with small changes. Now remember, this is the learning process for beginners. Uh, and beginners doesn't necessarily mean you've never solved the problem before, but uh, you don't have the habit and routine of following this process. You're not doing this automatically on a daily basis. When you're given an assignment, you don't automatically ask, what is the challenge? Uh, what is the current condition? Let's go and see. 
what's my first target condition? What's my first step? And how can I uh, try some experiments to get there? You know, norm, if people often don't think that way. They immediately start thinking of solutions. So we're trying to break a habit by replacing it with a better ha set of habits. For developing these better set of habits, it helps to have simple problems, or relatively simple problems are achievable. For example, you look at a repetitive process if you have one instead of a completely non-repetitive process to begin with, to begin to develop the routines. We need leaders who are interested, who are motivated, who have a natural inclination to self-develop positive habits to lead improvement toward business challenges. At least that's what Toyota wants. That's what they want their leaders to do. And I would imagine that you also want that from your leaders. Now, if you don't, you should, because the world is a complex place and everybody knows that it's rapidly changing and we need to adapt. Second, uh, tools like Gamble Walks and A3 Reports alone will not create these positive habits that we want our leaders to have. It just doesn't work because they're, they're undirected, because we usually don't have a good coach who's asking the right questions, who's leading us in the right way. And without the coach who's well-trained, then the, uh, these tools will not help. And if we do have a coach, it's often because we've hired a consultant or we've done a workshop and it doesn't happen often enough. We need effective coaching and we need practice routines that we actually practice at least once a day. And that seems to just be a natural uh, frequency whenever you're learning. And the improvement kata and coaching kata, the reason I became attracted to them when uh, Mike exposed me to them was that they are actually doing what the lesson books and the structure uh, that's used for teaching skills like sports and music and cooking uh, already have. They have developed a body of knowledge for how to teach golf, for how to teach gu guitar, for how to teach violin. And this has been fine-tuned for hundreds of years. Uh, we don't have the same methodology for teaching that has been developed for developing an effective leader who can develop themselves while they're also learning how to develop others, how to be a teacher. And for example, uh, if you want to be a music teacher, you have to be able to play the instrument and any good music teacher is still learning the instrument themselves at a much higher level. Uh, so they're practicing and they have a teacher and then they're teaching someone else. What we want is for managers to be learning from a teacher and to be teaching uh, the people that report to them, who they're responsible for teaching. So that means you have to be learning how to improve and you have to be teaching how to improve. With that, I will take questions. Okay, so uh, for questions, what I'd like everybody to do is raise their hand there is a little button below Jeff's video raise your hand if you want to be promoted as a panelist and then you could take yourself off of mute ask the question and put yourself back on mute also if you want a PDF of this presentation you see there just email me uh, here we go with questions and I'm gonna open it up to Brian's group first while I look for others that are interested in asking go ahead Brian anyone have any questions? Hi, Dr. Leiker. Um, I'm Dan Bateman from Pratt, and I uh, had a question in, in rolling out um, Lean as you're as you're learning and teaching this, and it's impacting um, a group of people that maybe aren't learning it deeply yet. Um, you sometimes get the pushback that, hey, you're creating a lot of um, extra work or a lot of extra paperwork by tracking things. And when you see this gap here and then we put up countermeasures, um, people can feel attacked by that, that it's more of a, hey, you're saying that I didn't do my job rather than, hey, we have an ideal state, we had a gap, we missed it, we're looking at how to fix it going forward. 
any thoughts or advice on how to help with that? Thanks very much. Very informative. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Thanks. We'll be looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Right, take care, everybody. Thanks, George. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you very much. It was very inspiring. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Learned a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it down right now. Thank you very much. Take care.